Uh, I am Meyer Magarosi Leitner, and I'm so excited to be presenting for the Shoot Extraordinary Conference this year. Uh, we are going to be discussing the topic today of evolving your portfolio creatively. Um, so let's get started. So first of all, a little bit about me. Uh, I am an artist and an educator and an alternative process enthusiast. We're going to go over a little bit about what that means uh, a little bit later. Um, and I am from just outside of Detroit, Michigan. My photo journey uh, started when I was 15 years old and I got a little point and shoot camera uh, that I split the money uh, with my dad. The next year after that, I started taking um, a three hour, three credit photography class at the career tech that was next door to my high school. And after that, I've continued out here collecting degrees like Pokemon cards. I'm currently in process for my MFA in photography. I'm getting that at the Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, I also have a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the College for Creative Studies. And additionally to all of that, I am the... Um, I am a founder and curator and artist for the Silver Water Collective, which is a group of 10 women photographers across the United States and Canada that all work in fine art photography in different ways. So if after this presentation you want to check us out, you can take a look at our social media links at the top. So I wanted to start this recording with the hilarity of that I went uh, deep into my external hard drive and found some of the first lens baby images that I ever took. These are from mid 2006, which is when I was about 18, I believe, 17, 18 years old. I had just graduated high school. This was my first DSLR. I had a Nikon D200. Don't come at me, Canon people. Uh, but, you know, that's what I was shooting at the time. Um, and I was playing around with a Lens Baby 2.0. And when you take a look at these images, you can definitely see that I had a little bit of a vision, I guess I would say, in that I was really very purposefully playing with color. Um, but let's let's talk about what it really is. I'm just exploring around my house, right? I'm just taking pictures of little plants on the outside of my house. Um, the color choices that I'm choosing, although they kind of go together, they don't necessarily go together. It wasn't like I was being incredibly thoughtful in why, um, why I was choosing each color. I was really just, you know, testing out the capacity of what my camera could do. At the time, my camera was brand new and I wasn't really sure how to use it as well as I could have. And also the lens. I was playing around with what the Lens Baby 2.0 could do. And I was really, um, I was really excited to try things out, but I only just wanted to play. I was additionally playing around with Photoshop without any real purpose at all whatsoever. I was just kind of like, okay, let's see what we can do with this and, and let's go from here, right? And of course, it, by no means am I saying that this is a bad start. This is just the beginning, right? And so whenever I think about photography, I like to think about this quote from Wynne Bullock, which is when I photograph, what I'm really doing is seeking answers to things. And I think that that's ultimately what I, um, as a photographer, I'm often going for. I am chasing questions. I'm, I'm searching for answers. And I want to use photography as the best way to find those answers. And our goal, ultimately speaking, right, is to evolve. And so, of course, I went on the dictionary because I wanted to know actually what evolve meant. And what they said was to develop gradually from a simple to a complex form, which I feel like is a really beautiful way of thinking about this. The idea of evolving from a simple idea to complex ideas is beautiful. And we as photographers should often be pushing ourselves to do that. So how on earth do we get from there to here, right? How do we go from just fiddling around, taking pictures of little things outside of the house or um, just bringing our camera from place to place and just seeing what we can find to 
taking photographs that mean something that are purposeful, that we're purposeful in what we're doing and we're pushing ourselves the entire way. So the way that we make this happen is through the idea of thematic projects. And so the way that you think about this is that if you want to have a purposeful portfolio, they need to be filled with multiple thematic projects over time, which ultimately speaking can last weeks to months to complete. So this isn't something that you do over an hour or two. This is something that you really are purposefully thinking about and pushing yourself forward to make sure that um, you are continuing to grow on the same thought process. These often involve much deeper research and much deeper planning. So you have to know what it is you like and what it is you're trying to do and how you're going to push yourself to get there. But the cool thing about this is that you can use your lens baby tools to convey the meaning that you're looking for. So you want to be very purposeful in what you're using. You now are at the point where you are beyond just using things because they look cool. You want to be able to make sure that the tools that you're using are very strategic and they're going towards the meaning of what you're trying to say. But ultimately speaking, all the points are considered here, right? You need to figure out your inspiration. You need to find your purpose and what you're trying to shoot. You ultimately have to capture what it is you're trying to say. And then at the end of it, you need to output it the way that fits best, that circles back to the theme that you're trying to do. So my favorite step one, and the best way that I think that um, to start any project is by utilizing an inspiration board. And you may have heard these referred to as mood boards before as well. And this is something that a lot of designers use. And if you're savvy, photographers can use them as well. Um, they can be created in multiple ways. Um, people create them using Pinterest, Google Slides, PowerPoint, etc. You can use them anyway, Canva. Uh, there's plenty of different ways that you can utilize um, creation of making these they can be digital or they can be physical if you look behind my head um that's another inspiration board that i have on the wall that has images that are pinned up to it um and they can be for any type of art just because you're a photographer does not mean that you only have to look at photography and i think that's really important to think about and pay attention to because the best artists and you're an artist right the best artists look at all different types and mediums of art and you utilize whatever you can find to get the point across that you need to get across so i wanted to show you an example of what my own personal inspiration board looks like um one thing that is important for me to point out is that i use pinterest but I don't go searching on Pinterest for um, pins that other people have. I place all of my own pins based off of photographers that I'm already looking at. And I, it's very important to me to make sure that I can find these people later. So what I always do is make sure that I am putting the photographer's name underneath. And... Um, I find these photographers from a lot of different places and ways. Um, some include uh, just magazines, right? I look at a lot of different photography magazines. I look at Photo Lucida. I look at the top 50 every year. I look at um, just you know, uh, Lens Scratch and Lens Culture and all of these websites that beyond Lens Baby, all of these types of websites that show what contemporary photographers are doing today. I also very much pay attention to historical photographers as well. So as you can see from this little section in my um, inspiration board, I love Julia Margaret Cameron and I also love Anna Atkins and I definitely love William Henry Fox Talbot. And the three of them together create a baseline of one of the projects that I'm going to talk about as we move forward with the presentation. And so looking and seeing those photographers as well is important to really show, um, looking at those photographers really show uh, a grounding 
in my own work and in the work here. Um, additionally speaking too, as you're, as you're looking through, you can see that there's a lot, I have a lot of different evolutions of, of a theme, right? So it's very clear that I like flowers. It's also very clear that I like different ways of photographing people. And I also really enjoy abstraction and I don't try to make my inspiration board fit one particular type of work by any means. I literally, when I'm producing for this set of, or for this board in particular, I am putting what I just like in particular, and I really use it as a way to figure out um, what themes are evident in the work that I appreciate, and what colors, and what palettes, and um, what styles, all of those things do that I appreciate to bring me more to the types of work that I really want to focus on personally. So you have your inspiration board. Now what? Now what do you do? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to figure out your project theme. And usually the way that I do that is by figuring out an overarching question. Things that, um, something that I want to know, something that I am paying attention to, something that I want to discover. And so an example that I can use for a future project we're going to talk about in a little bit, um, I have a project called The Untended Garden, and I had a set of questions that drove me at the beginning. Questions like, why is beauty considered problematic? Questions like, as a woman, am I an untended garden? And how am I personally not tending this garden? Um, those are questions that then drove me as a photographer. And so sometimes you just have to kind of think about what questions that you have in life and the things that are around you and how you can photographically answer that. But ultimately speaking, it all comes down to what on earth are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? And if you can figure out a way to photographically answer that, you will be so much closer to accomplishing what you want to accomplish. So we obviously are here as a part of the Lens Baby Conference, and I would be remiss if I didn't discuss the fact that you need to figure out what tools you're going to use. Do I use Lens Baby for every single project I do ever? Not necessarily, but do I use Lens Baby tools very purposefully when I do use them? Absolutely. And I do have some personal favorites that I use pretty often. Um, my first favorite is the Lens Baby Omni Creative System, which I use. I have all those ones that are on there on the little picture that I found on Google. I also have, um, I have, I think at this point I have every one that you can possibly get. Um, I started getting them a little bit at a time and realized that I needed more options. Um, the reason why I use the Lens Baby Omni system is because I really enjoy the fact that it can create this otherworldly kind of feeling because those reflections and refractions of light that are happening in the lens uh, caused by the glass in front of the lens, um, that creates an idea that we're going to discuss a little, a little bit later, but the idea of shooting things that are not actually there. And what does that mean photographically? Um, the other lens that I really, really love and I always go back to is my Lens Baby Velvet 28. Um, I love this lens because of the soft painterly quality that it gives and I used it very specifically in a set of work that we're going to discuss in a little bit um, because of that painterly quality and the way that I wanted that to reference. So let's talk specific projects, right? I have three projects that I'm going to discuss. Um, in this particular presentation and each one kind of feeds into the next. These are projects that I started making within the past e uh, two years. So, uh, yep, these are all starting, starting 2020 on. Okay. So the first project we're going to discuss is called mistrusting my nature. Um, the next few images are all from this particular project. And it started off 
because of a conversation. I was in a conversation um, with somebody who was critiquing my work, not even this work, previous work before that. Um, and they said this little quote that bothered me. They said, you can't photograph things that you can't see. And I thought that that was really closed minded, I guess I would say, um, because sure, okay, you can't photograph things that aren't there necessarily, but anybody who's played any with any extensive amount of slow shutter speed knows that you can photograph things that you can't see all the time, right? Macro, I, I don't know about you guys' eyes, but my eyes don't see at that level, right? So it, you can and you can't, right? Um, and that idea of photographing things that aren't there, that it's, it's very strange, but it's also something that was really interesting to me conceptually. And so at the time I was really photographing, I was really focused on photographing specifically about anxiety disorders. At this time that I had just come off of a five year project called hyperstimulation, which was specifically about photographing, um, the, how, panic attacks affect people. And so because of that, I was still kind of on this kick, even though I was slowly transferring out of it. Um, so in this particular set of work, I am focused on the idea of derealization, which according to WebMD is a mental state where you appear detached from your surroundings. So it's this idea that objects may seem too real or not as real around you. And sometimes you feel like you're swimming through a fog, but everything appears to be hyper-focused. And when I wrote the artist statement on this particular work, I talked about the idea that you may find yourself staring at the same area of blank wall for what feels like forever. But when you snap back into reality, only a few seconds have passed. And this, this derealization is this idea of your mind protecting itself, right? And so, this feeling will eventually pass, and maybe some of you know what I'm talking about, but and eventually you, the feeling passes, you go back to normal, and the world will speed right back up. And so what I was doing when I was looking at this particular set of work was that I was using that Lens Baby Omni system specifically to try to photograph that weird state of being hyper-focused on something but still feeling hazy and foggy around it. And the, that feeling that nothing is quite real. So I'm shooting this all Nikon D750, so full frame. I am using the Lens Baby Omni system, but specifically the Lens Baby Omni system with the color um, expansion pack, because at the time those two crystals were my bay. Um, in my editing techniques, you'll probably find this a little bit surprising considering all the color that's in these images, but I did not edit these for color. I did not push them for color at all whatsoever. They, I literally did some very slight adjustments to the exposure and called it a day. And so these images were very purposefully shot in a way that pushed the boundaries of what I felt like photography could be. Additionally, let's talk about output. Okay. Output's your last step. It's step four, right? If we looked at our little steps that we were talking about, I am an alternative process enthusiast. That means that I am I am a full true believer that your photography is not complete until it comes out in the print. Okay. And so because of that, I, <laughs> I'm not somebody who just prints something on glossy and calls it a day. That's not me. So what I did in these particular images is that I did an uh, experimental printing process where I used hand sanitizer to transfer ink onto another piece of paper. And I also use alcohol-based transfers on birch. So I'll show you the differences. So this is a paper piece. You can see the texture of the paper behind it. This is a wood piece. You can see the grains of wood, especially in the upper corners uh, and down here towards the bottom. These, all, these six are all wood pieces and these two are paper. And these are in a smaller scale. So the wood pieces were at 11 by 14 and the paper pieces were at 13 by 19. 
So here we are, still in 2020, and the next project we're going to talk about is where I started talking about a lack of control. So as you can already see by looking at this triptych, these images are related to the previous ones, right? They feel similar, but they're a little different. There's something else going on here. And um, these images were obviously an extension of the previous project, but this started being a discussion of what I felt like was control and how I felt like photography played into that. So these images were shot while I had an artist residency at the Siren Detroit, um, which is a hotel downtown during the pandemic. They were um, allowing artists to just come and stay there, which was beautiful. Um, and so I was shooting Detroit architecture and Detroit um, textural elements using the same methods that I was shooting with mistrusting my nature, but I was doing it for a, a little bit of a different reason. I'm still using Lens Baby Omni. I'm still specifically going color expansion pack with it. But as you can see, this work is a little, it has a different vibe, a little bit bolder of a vibe, a little bit more, um, pushing boundaries of a vibe. And so my artist statement with this was really discussing about how I've spent my entire life trying to control every single little thing around me, often very much at a great detriment to myself, except for photography. And that the only space that I allow things to be and that I push myself to break those boundaries is photography because I'm often chasing the idea of a lack of control in my work. So as lens baby photographers, I feel like you guys will understand this vibe, right? This idea that any photography that's like too perfect, too particular, too measured, that's uninteresting to me. If you want to have a conversation with me about your camera and how many megapixels it is, I I'm sorry, love y'all, but I'm not interested, right? I'm interested in pushing those boundaries and what I can make my camera do that maybe somebody else can't quite figure out. And so because of that, I'm really interested in that idea of like just trying to figure out new methods and trying to be a little bit Bill Nye with a set of experiments, right? And so this work was very, very, very specifically about abstraction because I wanted to make sure that I was, um, I was, as I put it in my statement, I was chasing a world less mundane than the one that I occupy. And I feel like that is a really interesting thing to think about, right? That my photography then lives in a different space than the one that I live in, right? So as far as output goes, right? We're still in the same vibe. We are just doing slight exposure adjustments, just a little bit. Those colors are straight from the Omni and those colors were very much on purpose, okay? Additionally, I'm doing an alternative process uh, again. I am doing on this time alcohol-based transfers on wood. So similar to the birch transfers that I was doing before, this is also birch, but I'm doing these at a much larger scale. So each one of those little panels from the diptychs or triptychs is um, 16 wide by 24 tall. So you can multiply it across. So each one of these is 24 by 32 across which is much bigger, right? Much bigger, much more in your face, much more present. Um, and I had a show of these and, and they were very in your face, bold and beautiful and pushing boundaries. And that was the purpose of this work to, to draw that attention to this type of process, this type of work and this way of working as a photographer. All right, y'all. So I'm giving you a little bit of a sneak peek. Um, well, maybe not that sneaky, but uh, so we've hit the point uh, to my current work, which I started in 2020. So all of that was happening in 2020. Uh, a lack of control ended in August. And when by the time I hit about mm, October, I started the intended garden. And this work started literally because I was watching an artist statement, um, an art, an artist talk. I'm sorry, um, from a couple of artists, and they brought up this idea of um, untended gardens gather dust, 
and I had this visceral reaction, right? And I thought to myself, well, am I an intended garden? As a woman, am I an intended garden? As a woman in my 30s, am I an untended garden, right? And so I wanted to find a way to use that metaphor of a garden to represent my coming of age as a woman. And so I'm doing this through a variety of techniques and processes to highlight the different parts of the aging process and the different components of being a woman. So this is like I, like I was saying before, do I necessarily use um, my lens baby tools for every single thing that I do? No, I don't because I have a lot of different tools, right? And so am I using the lens baby for every single bit or lens baby items for every single bit of this project? No, I'm not, but I am gonna particularly highlight the, the images that I am using lens baby for, okay? So in this particular project, I am using the lens baby velvet 28. I'll show you which ones I'm doing that for. I'm also using the Omni here as well. I am using the mirror wands, which are new, um, and I'm also using the prism wands. So if you look in this image, the image on the left is using the prism. Um, in this image, uh, I am layering images over top of each other, but those are using the mirrors. Um, and these ones are also using the mirrors. So. The artist statement for the intended garden really discusses and unpacks this idea of why I've spent so much time questioning who I am and why I see myself that way. And so my goal is to pair both self portraits, which are coming up in a second, and experimental abstract imagery, which you see before you, um, as a way to process through all of these different types of ideas. because honestly, because throughout my entire life, and I think throughout the entire life of most women, we're told that there's a certain set of perfections that we have to uphold, right? And many of those idea of what it is to be perfect or what it is to be an ideal woman, those clash with what I believe. And so because of that, I really wanted to explore this fracture of thought. So that idea that idea of fracturing, that's what's coming into play here with these particular images. I'm purposefully layering things over top of each other to play with that idea of fracturing. I think it is important to say too, just as one little mention, rarely do I ever just let um, the tool be the only thing that happens in an image. So when you look at these particular images, yes, I'm using the mirror wands, but I'm also layering and I'm also playing with color and I'm also doing some other things too. Um, I'm really just having the tool itself be the only thing that's happening there. And so that combination makes it, uh, takes it away from being about the tool and takes it more towards being towards the idea. So that's something to consider. So these images are using the Lens Baby um, Velvet 28, and these are photographs of me that then I am doing a um, alcohol-based, or a hand sanitizer-based, which is alcohol-based, right? Um, inkjet hand, uh, transfer process onto paper, which is creating this these painterly lines that are in the image, um, and those and then I'm placing flowers over top and re-photographing them because I wanted to create this idea of symbolically putting space between myself and the viewer, right? I'm also though very purposely photographing parts of me that I don't like um, as a way for me to reconsider and re- uh, reevaluate those parts of me and understand why it is that I don't like them and maybe appreciate them a little bit more. Um, but I'm also using these flowers and, and, and the garden in general because I see that there is a there is a comparison here, right? So gardens operate in cycles. Um, there's seeds, there's beginning growth, uh, roots taking hold, stems and leaves reaching high, different flora, and then eventual death at the end of the season, just to repeat again. And to me, photography works in a very similar way. There's that initial idea, and then there's that capture of light 
There's making your aesthetic choices. There's coming back to the materiality of the physical print. And then you have new thoughts. And then you come back to it and you just keep cycling back through. And every single time that you're doing that process, you're pushing that idea further and further, just like a garden pushes, pushes itself further and further through. So y'all, this is my thesis work, right? And so because of that, am I done? No, soon, soon I will be done. End of this, end of this school year, I will be done, be graduated. See me crossing fingers, right? Okay, so um, so because of that, am I done in particular with all of these images? With the ones that show texture, yes. So these ones in particular, I, I am done with these ones, but the images like these ones, um, I'm not necessarily done with them yet because I haven't considered how I want the print. I'm considering uh, fabric right now, but I'm not 100% sure. Because in my head, I'm thinking about how I want the exhibition to go. And that's, that's a part a huge part of this process and conversation too. If you're making work, a solid body of work, guess what, boo, you get to exhibit, right? As long as you figure out a way a person that you want to a gallery or space or um, find somewhere to show you'll have enough work to do so. And so when we talk about the output with the intended garden, I, um, I am editing color very, very purposefully here. I'm choosing this color because I wanted to have the girliest palette ever. Okay. I wanted it to be, I wanted people to see this work and go, oh, that's pretty <laughs> because I wanted it to have that beginning to then sneak through and have this serious conversation. Um, so I am still doing alternative experimental printing process techniques. Um, these images, like I said, are hand sanitizer on paper with then flowers placed over top and then re-photographed. So they can, the initial images are 16 by 20 that I then re-photographed, but now I can print them as large as I want. And I definitely have some thoughts and ideas towards how large I would want them to be. Um, and like I said before, I'm still formulating a lot of my other choices. So you may think when you're looking at this, like, hey, Mara, every time you photograph, it's just dead serious out here. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because at the end of the day, I still have to play, right? I still have to think about this and think about this in a way that makes it so that I still learn new things. So this, this image, and there's a couple images from this, but uh, I really have only shown one so far. This is when I got the Lens Baby Obscura and I was playing around with it. And that's my best friend. We were out at a botanical garden in Detroit on Belle Isle and we were, we were just playing around. And when I tell you that I was so frustrated this day, only because I, I was just tinkering with this. I couldn't quite figure it out. And then all of a sudden something magical happened and this image happened and it was beautiful and I was so excited. And so now in the back of my head, I know what this type of work looks like and I'm thinking, okay, how can I use this? in my next project or what I'm potentially playing with next. Because your goal is to have your range of technical things that you know how to do and to push those technical things into the slots of what your thematic choices are. So you don't quite have a thematic choice for this technique yet. That's okay, I'll have one eventually. But as it stands right now, it is something that's cool for me to play around with um, just for beautiful singular test images. So what I want you guys to think about as we're, um, as we're wrapping up this presentation and the idea of thinking about your projects, evolving your portfolio creatively and thematically is that the ultimate goal here is always growth. So this image is just one of those little images from 2006 of just a little flower that I found outside. And when I think, when I look at this work and then I look at the work that I'm shooting now, I can clearly see the difference in what I'm doing and how I'm pushing those boundaries creatively. Because ultimately speaking, you need to just push your work 
on to the next level. You don't want to be in a rut. You want to be pushing yourself further and making it so that your work is the best that it can possibly be. Because ultimately speaking, we're all right there on the cusp of something truly beautiful. So I would love it if you stayed in touch with me. So here are all sorts of ways that you can find me. Um, once again, so these are my, um, those are my Instagram. That's my uh, personal Instagram on top, Mara Magarossi, which is, um, it shows all my personal work and things that I'm getting involved with and different shows that I'm in. And then also the uh, Instagram for the Silverwater Collective, which is the group of 10 women that I'm a part of. So if you're really interested in different ways that fine art photographers play with ideas um, and push their work to the next level, feel free to give us both a little, uh, a little follow. I hope that you have a great rest of your experience as a part of the Lens Baby Shoot Extraordinary Conference for this year. And I hope to see you soon. Keep shooting, keep being creative, push those boundaries. Talk to you soon.